Hey guys, what's going on? In the previous video, we have talked about the five main selectors in CSS and how to use them to target HTML elements in different ways. However, in some cases, using selectors alone may not be enough or efficient. Fortunately, CSS also provides other ways to target elements by using selectors together, which is known as combinators. And in this video, we are going to talk about what these combinators are and how to use them in CSS. Before we begin, if you want to learn more about web development, don't forget to subscribe to my channel and turn on the bell notification so when I upload a video, you should get notified. Alright, so what's a combinator? A combinator is a way to define the relation between selectors. By using combinators, for example, we can target only child elements of a parent element or we can target an element followed by another element on the same level and like that. There are four types of combinators as descendant selector, child selector, adjacent sibling selector and general sibling selector. Now let's jump into code and see how to use them one by one. Alright, we have a very basic HTML template with some elements inside and I think they are all self-descriptive. Now we are going to target these elements by using the combinators. The first one I am going to show is the descendant selector. A descendant selector targets all elements of a kind under a specified parent element. For example, if we want to select all of the p tags inside the article tag, we first write the article selector, an empty space, and then define a p tag near, next to it. And finally, we can apply our rules. Let's give a background color, for example, of yellow. Save it. And the p tags inside the article tag now have a background color of yellow. The other p tags which are outside of it are not affected by this rule. This is basically how to use a descendant selector. The next combinator I would like to show is the child selector. Child selectors target elements directly under of a parent element. So when we put here a greater than character between these selectors, all of the p tags that are directly inside the article tag will get these rules. Since this one is not directly under the article tag but there is a div between them, this p tag is not going to be affected by the background color rule. So that's why we don't see in this p tag a yellow background. However, before when we have used the descendant selector, all of the p tags directly or not directly but inside the article tag got a yellow background color. That's basically the main difference between a child selector and a descendant selector. Let's move on with another combinator, which is the adjacent sibling selector. Adjacent means immediately following, and in CSS it is represented with the plus operator. When we use the adjacent sibling selector, it targets the second element, which is the p tag here, coming immediately after the article tag. So let's change this one with a plus sign, and now we can see only the p tag coming right after the article tag has now a yellow background color but not the others. However, if there was another tag between the article and the p tags, then this rule wouldn't be applied. So this is basically what the adjacent sibling selector does. The fourth and the last combinator is the general sibling selector. Sibling means elements on the same level so none of them are their parent or children. The general sibling selector targets elements of a specified element which are on the same level, which are their siblings. It is represented with the tilde operator, and when I change this to a general sibling selector, we will see that the p tag, which are on the same level with the article tag, will get this rule applied. So if you need to target elements on the same level of a specified element, it is good to use the general sibling selector. Sometimes people ask that we already have the class selector in CSS, so do we have to use combinators? Actually not, you don't have to use combinators. You can surely apply classes as much as you need, 
but sometimes in some cases using classes is not that efficient and then using these combinators will definitely help you to write less code and do more in CSS. That's why it's good to know them. So these are the four types of CSS combinators you should know. In the next video, we will continue with CSS fonts. If you find this video useful, please like and share. Thank you guys for watching and see you in the next video.